Hello, good morning, everyone. Hello to our viewers and participants for our Code Your Future with StackVec 40 Minutes Coding Workshop for Non-Coders in partnership with DICT Region 8 Eastern Visayas. And with that one, I would like to introduce myself. I am Isai and I will be your host for today's workshop. All right. Hello, everyone. Sige, so before we start, I'd like to acknowledge our participants here no, who came very early. So we have people from Tacloban. We have from Leyte. We also have from Northern Samar. We have from... Oi, we have from Quezon City. Galing. <laughs> All right. We have from Liloan. We have from Palo. Yes, hello everyone. Hello, good morning. So with that one, no, I'd like to ask, who are those first timers? Who are those um, uh, who, uh, the first time na nag-join kayo ng coding workshop? Code your future coding workshop. So if this is your first time, kindly type in first in the comment section. And if this is your second time, kindly type second. Okay. Bisaya ba taga Visa Eastern Visayas? All right. First, first. Diba? I, 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 I know Bisaya yung mga Eastern Visayas eh. Diba? Waray, waray. But I think an, nakakaintindi ng Bisaya. No? Maayong, maayong buntag. Maayong buntag sa tanan. All right. So we have our first timers there so congratulations guys and welcome to your code your mm. future journey all right so just a quick overview of what code your future is so this is an initiative of course in partnership with dict that aims to elevate more filipinos to become tech professionals through programming education so i know you're all here this morning because you are interested to learn programming. So with that one, I'd like to congratulate you for taking the first step no, towards your tech dream or becoming a successful tech professional. All right. Okay. So um, I would like also to request everyone to confirm your attendance. Kindly type in your name. Um, the place that you are watching from. And if you have joined our FB um, Code Your Future FB community, kindly also indicate na I am now part of the Code Your Future FB community. And if wala pa, I'd like to invite you to join our Code Your Future FB community. So in this um, community, you would be able to connect with fellow Filipinos learning how to code, connect with career shifters, and get the latest news on upcoming workshops and career sessions related to the code year future. All right. So, why or I'd like to share uh, I'd like to share kung bakit no um why 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 a career in tech is a good decision. No? First and foremost, well, you get to be one of the highest paid profession professional no in the country. So, malaki ang sahod, no? And flexibility, no? Of course, as a programmer, you're expected to work online as long as my internet, you have your device, your laptop, you'd be able to work effectively, no? So, somehow, you own your time, very flexible, and at the same time, you get to earn a very, not just good, but very, very good <laughs> amount of salary there. Okay. So since this is a workshop, I would also like to remind you that we have sent the pre-session assignment uh, via your email. So make sure that you have already completed your pre-session assignment. No, we, you were asked to enroll um, on a certain course. So if you have successfully enrolled in that, kindly type in the word enrolled so that we would know na you already successfully enrolled. So, and if you are also experiencing any problem with enrolling or creating your account, kindly type in. And by the way, all throughout our workshop this morning, we have our product team on standby to assist you with any problems, issues, or errors that you would be encountering. So they will be replying to you um, via the comment section. Ayun, dami na naka-enroll. Very good. So I think you are all ready na for the workshop. 
All right, there, there. And also, guys, to help us reach more Filipinos, no? So, if you know someone who is interested na parang may friend ako na gusto pala mag-aral ng programming or may friend akong gusto mag-start ng career in tech but doesn't know where to start, maybe this workshop is something for them. So, help us reach more Filipinos by sharing our event today and use the hashtag CodeYourFuture PH para naman ma-reach pa natin yung other Filipinos no who are interested to take a career in tech or at least le- uh, interested to learn programming there you have it all right and of course before we proceed to our um workshop no we would like to again acknowledge our partner for this morning the ICT region 8 thank you so much and with that one we would like or we would like to call in the director of the regional office 8 for an opening message director felix s tabanao jr so stock trick the sponsoring company for this event to the oic of uh, the technical operations division engineer Dante P. Rosales to the Pucal for ILCDB and at the same time our provincial officer for the province of Biliran, Ms. Hisel D. Martinez. To Mr. Ayan Conan Waniko, who coordinates and publishes announcements for this webinar. To all the attendees, to our students, lifelong learners, already professionals, but might want a career change, considering that our participants come from various backgrounds. I welcome you all to the coding workshop for the non-coders. This event is a collaboration between the ICT Regional Office 8 and the Stock Trick, a training partner of the companies you wish to join. They give more than simply coding skills. They also provide for self-development and career advancement. Are you familiar with coding? You may be curious about what it comprises and why it may be desirable. Coding is a synonym for computer programming and software development. Typically, these courses are deemed appropriate for high school and university students. However, this webinar will explain coding so that even non-coders may appreciate programming's technicalities. I extend my deepest gratitude to StockTrick for hosting this event. It will equip our participants with the skills necessary to pursue a tech professional profession transforming the Philippines into the world's leading tech hub. Thank you once again to the ILCDB training staff, Ms. Isel Martinez and Mr. Ayan Kunanwaniko, who closely coordinate with the stock trick and all attendees of this webinar. Have a wonderful learning experience, everyone. Once again, good morning. All right. Thank you so much. There. Okay. All right. Apologies. I think I just experienced some technical problem, but yeah, very, very common no, when, when doing online, online events there. So I'm back. I think I'm back. So with that one, thank you so much, Director Felix, for that opening message to our participants. Uh, this morning. So once again, I'd like to remind everyone to please complete your pre-session assignment so that you would be able to join and catch up in our um, workshop for this morning. So once again, congratulations for taking the first step in your coding or programming career. And with that one, I would like uh, also to inform you that after our workshop, we will be having our full stack bootcamp info session. So now that you have decided to start your career in tech and you would you would want to continue, so our full stack bootcamp might be something for you. 
end with that one let us all go so punta na tayo sa most exciting part of our workshop for this morning of course it's to code your first program in 40 minutes and with that one i would like to call in our very own senior software engineer at stack Trek, mr jive monterozo jive yes hello miss isai yes jive hello good morning, good morning. And hello, good morning also to our, um, to the ones watching us from uh, Facebook, from YouTube, and yep, hello, and I'm very excited to share the next 40 minutes with you guys as we um, go along our uh, coding workshop and as you create your first uh, uh, program using Python. So are you all excited about this one? Can I... Um, can I get a show of uh, people who are really, really excited? So if you're excited, let me see those yeses in the comment section so that we can begin. And I, I'm seeing people from um, all parts of the Easter, uh, the Visayas region. There are people from Leyte, from Samar. And there are people who are really, really excited already. So I think we can start with our uh, 40 minutes um, coding workshop. So just to set expectations, what we're going to discuss and talk about later are um, the very basics, uh, the fundamentals of uh, Python and programming. So I have been with Stack Trek also um, since uh, early this year. So I'm currently handling uh, a class, which I also um um bootcamp for python so and um web development so ayan so without further ado i think we can begin so let me share my screen give me a moment all right i think my screen is shared i'm just waiting it to be all right here so again good morning everyone and welcome to uh code your future which our mission was always has always been um to produce more industry ready programmers so we um we do understand that some people who are enrolled in this course are you know career shifters have very minimal um background uh on programming and that is our uh duty right here is to to be able to like express or impart to you programming in python in a very friendly manner so that you'll be able to code your first program program uh using python all right so python like any other programming languages uh we deal with data types so we deal with types uh these types uh come uh in a form of variables so uh, every value in Python has a data type. So let's think of a real uh, scenario, real life uh, example. Like uh, me, I'm a, uh, I'm a person, but I'm of uh, I mean I'm Jive, but I'm of a type person. So similar to Python, there are different types also uh, for values in Python. And since everything is an object in Python programming, data types are actually classes, and variables are instances of objects. So just like what I've mentioned earlier, let's say I am a class, I am an instance of a person, so I am of type person. Let's say I have a pet. Uh, my pet is uh, an instance of an animal. So that's basically how we can relate it to uh, the real life. So what are the data types in, in Python? So basically across all programming languages, uh, data types may vary. It, it may differ across um, other uh across other programming languages. But the very basic um, data type that we have is what we call the integer. So uh, I assume um, a lot of you are familiar now with real, uh, I mean with whole numbers. So integers can be of any length and it is only limited by the, it is only limited by the memory available. So integers are like whole numbers. So uh, five, zero, two, six, um, 9, 10. So all those are uh, are integers. It can be also uh, negative. So negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. Later on, we'll discuss another um, type of a number type for Python. But for this one, let's, um, let's try to remember that whole numbers are integers. This is the second type of a number type in Python. 
wherein we deal with um, decimal places. So we call this one float. So these are floating point values. So we have 2.5, we have 1.2, we have 0 0.5, 9.8, and so on. Any number that um, any number that has a decimal value um, would fall under the float type uh, value in uh, Python. So basically, what's the difference of using um, float and integers? So like in real life as well, there are values that we can consider as integer and there are values that we can consider as float. So floating point values are there to preserve the integrity of a value like we are not uh, numbers are not rounded up or not rounded down uh, instead it uh, preserves the exact and actual value of a number so an example of a floating value of a of let's say I, I, I was using myself already as an example let's say floating point would be um weight right um it could be height as well so that example of a floating point uh uh, variable, a variable, a variable that is of floating point type, let's say for uh, an instance of a person, when we say integer, uh, it will uh, fall under like a, uh, age because we typically say um, I'm three, I'm, I'm 25 years old. We don't say like I'm 25.8 years old. So we use whole numbers. Another would be um, how many how many hands or fingers do I have? I have 10 um uh, we don't say i have um 9.4 or 10.5 or whatsoever but yeah how many you know how many uh dogs do i have how many pets do i have so that's an example of um integer and float data types another data types that we deal with python are what we call uh python strings so string is a sequence of unicode characters so we can use single quotes or double quotes to represent strings. So multi-line multi-line strings can be denoted using the triple quote, uh, triple quotes. So what are examples of strings? So when we say um, my name, my name is Jive. So that is a sequence of Unicode characters J, I, V, and E. An example of a string would be stack check, S T A C K T R E K. So that is an example of a string. So yeah, for example, this one, this is a string. So when it prints, it just prints the whole string. This is a string. So this is how we code in Python. The left hand most letter here, we see as S is what we call the variable. The, the single equal symbol here is the assignment variable, wherein whatever is the value we see on the right, we assign it to the variable on the left. So the, the string, this is a string, is assigned to the uh, variable s and this multi-line string here a multi-line string is also assigned to the value s in python automatically your variables know what type they take the moment you pass a value to that variable so let's say you pass a number five your variable already takes up the type of an integer when you pass 0 0.4, your value already take your variable already takes up uh, the type of flow. So are we clear on that one? Um, are we understood on those parts? Are we clear on, on the first discussion and the lesson about types? Yes? All right. So basically when we do programming the main uh the main um difficulty or the main you know problem that we have or how do logics work basically the backbone of all the programs that we create it banks on logics it banks on um conditions wherein i'm supposed to execute this if i have this kind of condition and what better way to uh, to do that by making use of conditionals so conditionals also are present uh, across all uh, programming languages. But in Python, we have um, uh, conditionals that makes use of um, certain evaluations that makes us execute a block of code. So an example with that for that would be an if-else statement. So what is an if-else statement? So an if-else statement is basically 
um, a block of code used in Python for decision making. It executes both the true part and the false part of a given condition. So um, if the condition is true, then the block of code is executed. And if the condition is false otherwise, then the else block of code is executed. So let's say, for example, I have a very simple test expression here. So the test expression for your if-else statement is the decision-making part. So let's say the test expression here is if the weather is raining. So if the weather is raining, I have two sub-decisions um, after the test expression, one being true and one being false. So if the test expression is true, then the block of code under true will be executed. So the statement present in the body for the true block of code will be executed. Otherwise, the body of code under the false sub um, decision would be executed otherwise. So let's say if the weather is raining, if it's true, stay at home. If false, go out. So the moment your um, the moment your um, your condition is met, then it uh, begins otherwise. So I will show you a very very uh, quick example. Give me a moment. I will share to you my screen. All right. Um, this is an example of that one. All right. So let's say I have here. Um, Let's say number, uh, let's say I have here a number, a number is one. And then I have here an if condition, if number is greater than, let's say the number is greater than zero, I will print the number is positive. Else, the number is negative. So I have here number of data. Uh, I have here a variable number of type uh, of type uh, integer, which has a value of one. So at lines two to five, I am evaluating here whether the number that I have here is greater than or less than zero. So at line two, I am checking if it's greater than zero. If yes, it then executes this block of code, which prints the number is positive. If it fails at line two, it then proceeds to evaluate line four, which is else. So it prints the number is negative. So by definition here, when we execute this code, it prints that our number is positive. Because the moment it executes the first if statement and it First, if statement and it finds a statement that is true, it skips all other statements. Now, what happens when I say put here negative one? It checks if the number is greater than zero. So, by mathematics, it's false. So, it does not execute this block of code. It then skips to this block of code. It executes else. The number is negative. So, it checks, execute. It says the number is negative. So that's basically how um, coding uh, works uh, for if conditional statements. All right. Now let's proceed with the next, um, the next topic for this one is the arithmetic operators. Basically, arithmetic operators are used to perform mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Basically, these are the fundamentals in computation, in, in coding, in across different programming languages. And I bet we are very familiar with these operators because uh, we use them in our daily lives. The, the way we compute how much we're getting discounts from our online shopping, we use arithmetic operators. Uh, the, the way we compute how many days are left for our parcel to arrive for our parcel to arrive, we compute also mathematical operators. The way we compute the um, how many or how many items do I have to buy in the grocery just for my budget to fit in, I have to use mathematical operators. So it's basically just the basic use of uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. 
So let's start with addition and subtraction. So I have here two variables of type integers, x and y with values 15 and 4 respectively, x being 15 and y being 4. So when I print here x plus y is equal to x plus y, x plus y, the x plus y here in the expression um, already um, adds the two numbers 15 and 4. Basically, performing addition subtraction in um, programming is as easy as putting two numbers and putting the arithmetic operators in between those numbers. So x plus y. So x plus y is 15 plus 4 is 19. And then for subtraction, it's x minus y. X divided by y is um, uh, x minus y is 15 minus 4. That's why it's 11. Similarly, multiplication does the same, but it uses different symbols. Uh, asterisk for multiplication and the backslash for division. So here, x times y is 15 times 4 is 60, while x divided by y is 3.75. So the value of um, the product uh, of the um, quotient here is of type float already because it notes the decimal places when it divides 15 by 4. Anybody who have questions on that? Do we have questions for mathematical operators, for conditionals, or are we good to proceed? All right, I think we're good to proceed. Um, yeah, I, I think um, we're able to catch up. Next topic that we're going to discuss are logical operators. So how does logical operators differ from uh, arithmetic operators? Arithmetic operators makes use of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Well, logical operators are operators used to perform um, operations on values and variables. They make us, they make use of the decisions that we have, especially on our um, conditional statements. So an example of a logical operator would be an AND operator. So let's say I have X and Y. So I have two conditions. Let's say if it is raining and if, um, if it is raining and if it's morning, all right, so if it's raining and it's morning. So X, I will evaluate if it's raining and Y, I will evaluate if it's um, more in the morning. And operator acts and, act, and operator returns true if and only if both operands are true. Else it returns false. So if it is raining and if it's morning, it will return true. But if at least one of those two is false, uh, regardless if it's not raining or it's not morning, the condition automatically returns false. So basically, the AND operator is strict that all the operands, all the condition must be true for the whole equation to return true. So for example, X is true, so it goes to true. And if Y is true, and it goes at true output. Else... For X and Y, if X is true and Y is false, then it has a false output. Or if X is false, then it goes to false output, regardless of what Y is. Because the moment it sees one operand that is false, it already uh, it automatically returns false. So here, I have A, B, and C. A being 10, B being 10, and C being negative 10. So if A is 0, uh, if A is greater than 0 and B is greater than 0, then I will print the numbers are greater than 0. So let's first evaluate. A is 10. I will evaluate, is A greater than 0? Yes. So it's true. And then I will proceed to evaluate B. Is B greater than 0? It's also true. So true and true will return true. That's why it will execute the print statement. The number are the numbers are greater than zero. Now, very different to the uh, true uh, up to the or operator, wherein the or returns true if at least one of the operand is true. So it's not that strict compared to and that it needs all operands to uh, to be true. In OR, it just needs at least one. 
So we have here x or y. If at least x is true, then true. If it's um um it finds one true, then it's um gonna be true for uh all. So we have here a is equal to ten. B is great. Uh, B is less than ten. Uh, negative ten, and C is zero. So I have here a condition that checks if A is greater than zero or B is greater than zero, then I will print either of the numbers is greater than zero. So let's try. Let's check. Is A greater than zero? 10 is greater than zero. Seems correct. Yeah, that's that sounds correct. So it's true. Then it checks. Is B greater than zero? Negative 10 is not greater than zero this means this is good this operand is false so we have two we have true or false but by definition of or the or uh, operator returns true if at least one operand is true so this means since a is greater than zero it prints either of the number is greater than zero do we have uh, any questions on that one any um any um clarifications for that one? Are we clear on the discussion? No confusion on the part of um uh logical operator lo operators, arithmetic operators, uh data types, variables. No? All right, I'm seeing people here saying. Um, they're able to catch up. So I, I, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. And I think everything's clear for everyone. Okay. Now, I think it's time to start our coding session. So basically, for the whole remaining time that we have here for the workshop, let's try to apply what we've learned so far from the, the minutes that we've had earlier with the discussion, like variables, operator. So what I'm going to do is I will present to you a scenario, then we'll code uh, we'll um, code it um, later. So um, I'll be coding and you'll be coding as well. So let's see. So we have here um, an amusement park. So an amusement park that uh, requires tickets for um, viewers or for people to enjoy. So uh, I need one ticket to be able to enter. Um, but the ticket varies from children and adult so since the, the the current situation now is things are slowly getting back to normal things are slowly getting back to like um um back on their feet businesses are slowly getting back on their feet children are now being allowed to go to amusement parks as well as being uh, as well as adults so i need a ticket for uh, per person okay one ticket for an adult and one ticket for a child however the um the um the ticket price varies for adult and children so and it varies on each day also which means the early rate for an adult is for mondays tuesdays thursdays fridays is 120 pesos well it's 150 for wednesdays and saturdays while it's also while it's 200 on a Sunday. And the early rate for a child is 20% of the rate of the adult. Okay? So whatever the price of the ticket for the adult, 20% uh, is discounted on that for the price of the child rate. Now, we need to compute the total cost per transaction of, for example, a family or a group of people or an individual going into the amusement park. Now, we have to take note that since it's Christmas season, the amusement park is committed to donating 12% of every transaction to charity. So let's say I paid 100 pesos or as let's say I paid, uh, uh, let's, pay, let's say I paid uh, 120 pesos. I went there for an hour on a Monday. I paid 120 pesos. 12% of, of that, which means around 14.4 pesos will be going to charity. So that, what, that's what we have to take note. Now, in coding, we have to be mindful of our inputs. 
So we need inputs. Our inputs would be, uh, I need the day of the week. Obviously, we need to know what day are we going to the amusement park to determine how much our how much is the cost for uh, how much is the cost for uh, each ticket, and then I need to check how many adults are going because I need to co count how many tickets are being sold, and I need to multiply that to the uh, price of the ticket. I also need to compute the number of children going. I need to compute also for the number of hours, for the number of hours that they are, um, uh, for the number of hours that they are um, going to consume or that they're going to stay in the amusement park. And also, I'm going to check how how, how much they're paying. So I need to check how much they're paying. So let's uh, code that one here. I will share my screen again. All right, and let's clear this one. So first, uh, my tip always when um, we start coding, I mean, to every uh, to every uh, person trying out on their first um, um, program is you try to understand the variables given in your problem. So in the problem earlier, I was given um, I was given the price of the ticket per day. I was given the price of the children also since it's a 20% discount. And I'm given also the, um, the charity donation. Now, what do I need from the, from the customer? I need to know what day, what day are they going. I need also to know um, how many adults are attending. I also need to know um, how many children are going. I need to know how many hours are they going to stay. And I need to know how much are they paying. So that. So let's start by um, initializing the discount of the child. So we do very know that the child discount is 20%. So when we uh, do that in decimal, that is 0 0.2. We do know as well that the um, charity donation is at 12 percent so so it's 0 0.12 so you can code uh in parallel uh with me so as i do my code you can also try uh coding this one so uh we can code at the same uh, pace all right um i i, I see here a question um I see here a question that in our logic, even one is correct and the rest are false or wrong. The result, yes, that's correct. Yep. So I, I do have here already a child discount that is 20% and a child donation that is uh, 12%. Now, what do I need? I need input from the user. And how are we going to ask input from the user is to, is to um, use the input syntax. Now, what do I need to know? I need the day of the week. So the day of the week is going to be what type is going to be of type string. So str input. I also need to know the number of adults. So the number of adults is going to be an integer since there is um, not uh, uh, there is no such thing as half a person. So I need to know also the number of children going. The number of children also would be integer since there's no such thing as one half child. So say input also. Also, I need to know how many hours are they staying. So number of hours is is also an integer. Let's say um, this amusement park uh, has a policy of staying for uh, early rate. So one hour, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, so like that. Also, I need to know how much are they paying? So payment is equal also to, um, let's say they pay a float. So let's have this one, float. All right. So I now have my inputs. I have the day of the week. I have the number of adults. I have the number of children. I have the number of hours. And I have how much are they paying? So are, are we still following? Uh, are you still able to uh, follow? Yes? All right. 
All right, let's continue. Now, I do know that for this Wednesday and Saturday, the pick ticket price is at 150. So I need to do conditional. So what conditional do I apply here? An if else statement. So if the day of the week is equal to a Wednesday, or so either a Wednesday or the day of the week is e sorry if this is double equals since we're doing a comparison so remember we only do one equal symbol when we're doing assignment so meaning we're assigning the value of this right part to the left part we do double equals when we are doing comparison when we are comparing this variable if it's Wednesday Okay, now day of the week is Wednesday or day of the week is Saturday. If it's either Wednesday or Saturday, our adult ticket, our adult ticket is at 150. Now, I need to do another condition because this only caters to Wednesday and Saturday. I need to cater also to Sunday, which has 200 pesos ticket price, and the other days, which have which have 120. I will do elif. So elif means else if. So elif, the day of the week, is equal to a Sunday. Then... My adult ticket is of is valued at 200 pesos. Else, when we say, what's the difference of else if and else? When we say else if, we are still um, we are still uh, being specific on the condition. So when we say here at line 10, if day of the week is Wednesday or Saturday, we are defining if it's a Wednesday or Saturday. When we say else if, it's another condition besides Wednesday and Saturday, but we are uh, emphasizing or we are specifically saying if it's not Wednesday or Saturday, but it's a Sunday, it's 200. But when we say else, it's like um, for the rest. So if it's not Wednesday or Saturday and it's not Sunday, Regardless of what day it is, the adult ticket will be 120 pesos. So now, from here, we're able to get now the ticket price for every adult for Wednesdays, for Saturday, for Sunday, and for any other day for the rest of the week. Are we still able to follow? Are we still um, good with this part? Yes? All right. Now... We do know that that um, the child price is discounted based from the adult price. So I will have here child ticket is equal to the adult ticket minus the adult ticket. Multiplied by the child discount. So let's say here the adult ticket is 200. So 200 minus 200 times 20%. So 200 times 20%, that is 24 pesos. So 200 minus 24, so that will be 176. So the child ticket here is only 176 pesos. Are we still good? Do you still follow? Are we, do we have any questions? Ah, for payment. Uh, we have a question here. Why did we put in as input in payment? Ah, sorry. We have here for payment, we have float because possibly they will pay in, you know, they will pay with centavos and clear, um, by uh, sticking to uh, the real world, it's, it's possible also to pay. They want to pay in centavos. But yeah, they can also do that. 
because it's also possible for a child ticket or a child price to have decimal places since it's a 20% discount. So it's really possible. Um, yeah, do we have any questions uh, by, uh, so far? All right, we're still following. Okay. Now, I need to compute now the price of all the adults. So how do I compute the price of the adults? It's basically the number of adults multiplied the ticket price multiplied by the number of hours. So let's see here. Total adult is equal to we have here the number of adults. So number of adults. Make sure all variables are consistent with spelling. It will pose an error. It will say variable not defined or variable not found when you have you have you have uh, misspelled a variable somewhere in your code. So total adult is equal to the number of adults multiplied by multiplied by the adult ticket. So whatever value of the adult ticket is multiplied by the number of hours. It's basically that simple to compute the total price for the adults. For the children as well, I will just put total child is equal to the number of children multiplied by the child ticket. And then I will multiply it also by the number of hours. Got it. Do, you ha do we have any questions with the computation for this part? <clears throat> do we have questions or uh, do we still follow um, this part? Are we clear so far? All right. So now, how do we compute their total bill. So we just we just add the two. So we say the total bill is equal to the total adult because this is a price for all the adult tickets plus total child. So this is the total bill. Now remember we have we have to donate twelve percent of what they're paying to charity. So you have also here total charity is equal to total bill, total bill times the charity donation. Okay, now we're good. Now we just need to know if what they're paying is enough. If they're paying, um, if they lack money when they paid or if it's enough. So let's say if the payment, if the payment is less than, is less than their total bill, then I will print not enough money. So I will just print not enough money if their payment is less than. Else, meaning they paid exactly or they paid more i will print uh, a block of code wherein i will do something like uh total adult bill total adult bill and then how much am I how much am I getting for the total adult fee is the total adult. And then so don't confuse this backslash n here is just for a new line. So it's like the enter character when you're typing. So I just don't want the output to go in one line. So I just want it to like display per line. And then I will also display. Total child bill. Let's use fee. So total adult fee and total child fee. I have here the total child. Now, I also need to know the 
total um total cost total cost for everything and that would be what variable did we use it will be this one total bill now we also need to do compute how much are we donating to charity so charity donation charity donation is this one total charity okay and now I need to compute the change. The change for the payment. So change is basically payment minus the total bill. And we're done. So change is equal to payment minus total bill. So um, everyone still able to follow? Yeah, yeah. So, do you, um, are you guys able to follow? Are we able to catch up on these? Do you have any questions on the computations, on the display? None so far. All right. So, how do we run this one? So, in your, um, in the, um, in Stock Trek, um that we have here in the site for the um input here we're going to put the input in order and in the manner that they are being placed here so we have five inputs here we have the day of the week the number of adults the number of children the number of hours and the amount that they're paying okay so Make sure that the number that we are, the number of inputs here are also the number of inputs that we are putting here. Otherwise, when we execute our code, it will pose an error EOF when reading a line. It means one, two, three, four, five. There are five inputs here and it's not getting five inputs. So let's say a custom input. Let's say I visited on a Monday. There is one adult visiting and that's me. There, is, there are no children visiting because I'm going there alone. I'm going to spend an hour, just one hour on the amusement park, and I paid 200 pesos. So this is how we put our inputs. So basically, um, I put the day of the week, one adult, the number of children, the number of hours, and how much I am paying. Do we still uh, follow with this one? And when I execute this one, Oh, it says not enough money. Why am I getting not enough money here? Uh, total bill is equal to child. So I'm paying 200. I'm just supposed to be... Um, I'm just supposed to be billed out for 120. So let's, let's compute here. Number of children, child ticket, number of hours. I assume this is... Correct. Let's let's try to check total bill, total adult and total child, or let's see how much I'm paying for now. Let's try to let's try to comment these one out first. Let's see how much I'm paying. Oh. Ah, all right. Ah, okay. So I have here payments. How much am I paying? My paying is 200. It's not getting the payment. So let's here payment minus ah payment minus total bill. Yeah, I think that is correct. Let's, let's have that one. Yeah, let's have here initialize a variable just so we are not confused. So payment minus the total bill. And then let's use here change. 
So I wonder why it's a negative 120. So let's my payment is 200 and the total bill here total cost is 120 let's try to check it so you can follow with this one so it's 120 for an adult since i'm going alone um for the change i'm not quite sure it's hold on Hi. All right. Um, adult ticket is I I moved here on a Monday, so I should be able. I this should be um, this should be just one hundred and twenty pesos. So let's try to check this one. Let's try to print how much are we paid in the payment. So we can check. Oh, change is not I. Oh, it's not uh getting here a value for our input for payment let's see why am i not getting a value here for payment hmm. hold on while well, i uh... is equal to this variable payment minus total bill. Oh, it's not. Oh, sorry. But I think this was this was what um someone pointed out earlier. Yeah. No, this was what someone pointed out earlier. Instead of putting input, I put in. Sorry. I think that was the question that was raised earlier. I got quite confused. Uh, I, I th there was a misspelling here instead of input. So when asking input, it should be input. So I put here in. Um, so this is able to compute now for the um, for the change. So again, let's bring back our code. If change or if payment is less than um, the total bill, then I will have to print. Not enough money. Else, I will print that one. Okay, so there. So it was just a misspelling uh, here at line eight. So make sure to check your line eight. So it's payment equals float input. So thank you to that one who pointed it. Yeah, that um, someone. Um, um someone was able to um point out earlier so we have here a question uh the condition is less than not equal um sorry which part is this one sir uh there's a question here uh adult ticket is 200 but the condition is less than and not equal no sir i am visiting on a monday i'm visiting on a monday so the ticket only is for 120 pesos so that's why my bill is all only 120 pesos and I do still have a change of 80 pesos. 200 pesos is only for a Sunday. So when we put here Sunday, when we put here Sunday, my bill is going to be 200. Charity donation of 24 since it's 12% of my total bill and there is no change since I paid 200. But if I pay like 150, it will say I don't have enough money. All right. There are there still any questions? Um, were you able to execute the the code here? May I know what? Uh, are you getting the correct output as well?
do um if you're able to um if you're able to execute your code successfully using these inputs let's say sunday 101 and 200 and it is showing also uh two hundred adult fees 200 child fees zero total cost is 200 charity donation of 24 and zero change uh kindly type success all right let's see how many are able to uh get their uh code running so if you're able to uh, run your code, um, let me see a show of people who are able to run their code successfully. Can you type in success? I think we have uh, one here. Uh, yeah, we have a, a quite a few people who are able to run their code successfully. So type success if you successfully executed your program with the correct output. Yeah. Anyone having issues? Anyone having problems? Let's try to fix those issues. Do we have uh, people? All right. We are having a lot of people here being able to execute their code properly. Congratulations to those people. You were able to create your first Python program. Uh, how about the others? What are the issues that what are the issues that you're getting? Um, what are the uh, errors if there are on your program? Yes, yeah, syntax error. There is a syntax error. May I know which part of that program? Make sure to check your code. Make sure to check your code that the variables of are correct in spelling. Make sure also that after the condition here for the if else, you have here colon. So this is a possible issue for syntax error. So let's say I remove the colon here. It will, uh, let's remove the one below. So if I remove the one here, it will say syntax error. So make sure to put colon. Others are also getting... Two hundred is not less than two hundred. Yeah, two hundred is not less than two hundred. Meaning, it will not prompt me not enough money because technically, when my bill is at two hundred and I pay at two hundred, it's acceptable. I have enough money to pay for it, so it's going to print my receipt. So it's not going to prompt me not enough money. So yes, two hundred is not less than two hundred, but two hundred is equal to two hundred. Also, Python is very uh, sensitive with indention. So if you can see here, I have here if. So once I do another line and if, make sure it's one tab away from the left. So all the conditions that are one tab away, so I have here one tab away, it's under the if or it's under the parent uh, condition where it's uh, immediately uh, uh, above. So make sure that but all, all statements that are not indented are, uh, are outside. So make sure that when you put statements inside your if, make sure it's one uh, tab away from the left. All right? All right. What are the issues with the others aside from syntax errors? Uh, kindly put the inputs here. So the inputs are like this. Sunday, 1, 0, 1, and let's say you paid 200. And then from here, you can play around. You can like put, I will visit on a Friday. There are five of us in the, there are five adults visiting. There are two children. We're going to be spending it for four hours. And I paid like uh, 5,000 pesos. Yeah, it's, it's that like that. So this is the total cost, 3,168. So try to play around with your inputs um, if you're already done with your code. When it says invalid syntax, um, uh, when we say invalid syntax, it's possible that uh, you don't have the colon present after your if and else if.
So someone is asking here, how do we go about ternary operators in Python? So basically, this coding workshop uh, really caters to the very basics and to the very fundamentals. So as much as we really want to showcase shortcuts on codes, um, short shortcuts on codes on how we can you know shorten lines or block of codes, we want you to get the full experience on your first program. And also let's start on the fundamentals and the basics so, so as to not confuse you with any other syntactical um, you know errors. It says here, why do we use string in weekdays? Why do we use str in weekdays? Because all words, basically all words are string types. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my name is a string because day is not a number. Monday is not a number. Um, um, it's not a float. So it's a string. So that's why we use string. Any other um any other uh people who yeah when you say name total bill is not defined make sure you don't have a misspelling on your code possible there you have a total bill one variable total bill and the others are misspelled so make sure to check that it possibly is inconsistent with the spelling Make sure that you have the correct spelling. So that's what you're getting. EOF, I, uh, EOF, when reading a line, it's possible here. So I will explain to you why EOF when reading a line. On lines 4 to 8, you are asking five inputs from the user. The day of the week, the number of adults, the number of children, the number of hours, and the payment. And if it does not satisfy here for the custom input, let's say you have um, you have less so let's say I only have four. One, two, three, four. I don't have the payment available and it's supposed to ask me for a fifth input. It will say EOF, end of line. So make sure you are putting the same number of um, the same number of uh, variables the uh, as you defined here in your block of code. So that's what's causing the issue. For invalid syntax, it's possible that you use only one equal sign for comparison for if make sure you use two equal sign two equal sign is comparison one equal sign is assignment and make sure to put a colon after your if elif or else all right i'm seeing people now getting success uh success runs any other um people getting uh, issues with their code so that we can uh, fix it. EOF when reading a line, um, as I've mentioned earlier, it's possible that you don't meet the number of uh, inputs here as you initialize in the code in the custom input. So make sure that there are one, two, three, four, five lines of input in the custom input. Friday, 5, 2, 4, and the, the payment. So the day, the adults, the children, the number of hours, and the payment. So make sure it's five lines. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If it's not the same number, it will post EOF when reading a line. There is a colon but still invalid syntax. Make sure your equal sign are correct. Make sure to uh, make sure to uh, check if your if if else if uh, are using double equals, All right? EOF EOF error when reading a line. Make sure you populate custom inputs. Make sure you put custom inputs here. Right, we're getting a lot of success runs now. Right, and once your code is already successful, you can try to play uh, along with your inputs. Try to put different day, different number of adults, different number of hours, and you'll be amazed that 
Yeah, your your code basically works. Yeah, total bill is not defined. It's possible that uh, somewhere you've misspelled. So for example, I used here total bill. And here I used total bill with one L. There's a misspelling. Here at the top, I used total bill. That's two L's. Here below, I used one L. So there's a misspelling. So when I try to execute, it really says total bill is not defined. So make sure you're spelling across your program is of the same spelling for the same variable, okay? Because that will be the error. You can check the full code. I think the full code is being um, commented here. So syntax error, it's possible on the equal sign. It's on the equal sign or uh, the colon. So make sure it's uh, equal sign or colon. Make sure also when you do print, you have here um, the quotation marks, the comma, the closing parentheses. Make sure your input namings here are correct. Yeah, that would possibly pose issues for syntax errors. Invalid syntax for cannot assign to operator. It's possible, sir, that you used one equal sign here. So make sure to use double equals for uh, for comparison. So for this one, um, uh, you have to check uh, diligently your code from top to bottom on which possible uh, error you're getting. You may want to compare the code here in the program that I am sharing. So you may want to compare it per line. So possible that you are missing here, um, you know, uh, possible that in the assignment you use double equals instead of a single equal. So yeah. So that will pose uh, syntax errors. I, I see one now being success. How to put text before we input? Ah, basically go to custom input, sir, and put your inputs here the custom input and make sure there are five because you're asking five from the user all right we're getting successes now all right success syntax error um, for syntax error, if for invalid syntax, it's possible that you missed the colon for if else. It's also possible that you missed the equals, double equals for conditions. Ah, for the labels before input, sir, we are not catering to that just yet since we're using the um, we're using the stack check uh, portal. We're using our um, our site for catering inputs. So we are not basically prompting input from the user, like input here, text. So let's focus on the basic, uh, the basic and fundamentals here of asking input and just putting custom inputs in this tab. All right, success, success. So can the other people who had syntax errors share what their errors were so others can, you know, others can try to check also? So always make sure that when you code in Python, uh, basically my tip for beginners and especially... Um, not really for beginners, but I do practice this one as well. That when you are faced with a certain problem or a certain um, coding exercise, you really try to understand what is needed from you, what is asked from you. So I I I, I need to write it on a piece of paper. Use your use your pen and paper. Write down the details that you have. Um, what are the given already? What do I need? To do and what is asked from me and from there you try to connect how do i go from here to to here and you'll be able to come up with your program and take it 
one step at a time. Do not overwhelm yourself on the next steps without passing on to the previous and first steps. So take it one step at a time and everything will follow. All right? So there's really, we, we all started from uh, at a point where we don't know what to do, where we are so confused with the errors that we're getting, when we're so confused with how we're going to achieve this kind of output with such very limited resources or very minimal knowledge. But once um, you you are able to identify your, your uh, variables, the given, what is needed from you, then you'll be able to connect those things and you'll be able to come up with your program in no time. All right. And I'm seeing here a lot of successes from everyone and I'm very happy that um, I was able to be part of your first uh, stock check also and I was able to be a part of your first uh program the first program that you created in python and i hope that this, this is not the end let those errors not hinder you from pursuing and continuing to to venture into the programming world um make this as a stepping stone into trying to try new exercises wanting to solve new exercises and in no time you'll be able to uh, to perform different um exercises and problems with different complexity. So I congratulate everyone who are able to um, execute their uh, very first program in Python. And yeah, um, this is not, this is just the beginning. And I'm sure with um, with this kind of stepping tone that StackTrack has provided, I'm sure that there are a lot of great opportunities that awaits you uh, in the future. So I, so Yep, I think that's it for my time. And I do thank you all for your participation yeah. in this very um, quick 40-minute coding workshop. And yeah, I'll, I'll hand you over to Miss Isai. All right. Thank you so much, Jai, for leading our Sorry. workshop this morning. Thank you so much. And also, again, congratulations to all of our participants who successfully completed their code, their first code in 40 minutes. Ayun. So for those na nagkaka-problem, may mga error, we have posted um, the complete code, uh, the link where you can access. So we advise you not to copy-paste. No, So you cannot copy-paste it. Do not copy-paste for you to be able to really practice coding so the link is on the comment section we'll also be sending it um now and also for those who successfully completed kindly take a screenshot of your completed code and submit uh, for you to be able to get your certificate of participation submit it via also the link that is found on our comment section for you to be able to get your certificate of participation there once again congratulations so at this moment no um Again, this is already your first step. And with that one, I'd also like to invite you, if you are interested to be part of our Code Your Future initiative, be, be one of our volunteers. Sign up at bit.ly slash codeyourfuture dash volunteer. And at this moment, we'll be having our bootcamp info session. And I'll, I'll hand it over to our very own head of growth, Ms. Haifa. One, if today you are very interested to pursue a career as a coder in the IT industry, but isn't confident with your skills or with having zero or minimal experience, then this opportunity is for you. In the next few minutes, you'll learn about the StackTrack Full Stack Bootcamp that trains you to become a job ready programmer in just four months so as you can see here you have two options the first one is the co-living bootcamp this is the first of its kind here in the philippines as it combines both learning and lifestyle into one exciting and rewarding experience it means you will be living in one building with other boot campers and you will be able to leverage all of the amenities and the social experience of learning with other boot campers. 
And then the other option is digital. It is virtual. That means you can take this bootcamp anywhere. By anywhere, it means if you are in the province, then you can take this bootcamp at the comforts of your home. Or if you enjoy traveling, then you can also take the bootcamp while you are traveling. Now, for you to be able to understand and get a picture of what exactly are we going to do when we enter the bootcamp. So let's assume that you already applied and earned a slot in the bootcamp. Here in the next few minutes, you can also imagine and also experience virtually what it is like what you will be doing, and what will be the experience like learning with Staff Trek. So the first thing that you do in your day is have the daily discussions with your trainers and peers. So you, since you will be building real-world applications, always remember that in this boot camp, we focus on your practical skills, the skills that you can really use and immediately practice. And in your daily discussions with your trainer, you will be covering various topics. And the topics that you will be covering will depend based on what module you are in during that day or during that week. So remember, you are building real-world applications, and the benefit here for you, especially if you have zero experience yet, is that at the end of the boot camp, you will already have a bunch of projects that can showcase your skills based on the real-world applications that you already built. So the next thing that you do after your daily discussions with your trainers and peers is that you now go on and do and complete your hands-on coding modules. It also covers advanced curriculum. You want to focus on the topics and the skills that is relevant today, not relevant five years ago, but relevant today and in the future as well. So after you go through the module, do the exercises, learn the things that you need to learn, once you hit a bump or you're having a difficulty, the platform or the bootcamp has a one-on-one -on -one live trainer's capability. And what exactly is this? So in just one click, when you are having a problem with the exercises that you're doing or the project that you are doing, in just one click, you get connected to the next available trainer and then you will be able to chat with that trainer immediately. So you can share your screen with the trainer, you can code together with your trainer, and you can discuss with the trainer with the challenges that you are having. As you can see, it's quite different because as you code together with your trainer, it feels like it's very interactive and it's very personal because the trainer is focused on you as you try to learn that specific skill or try to resolve that specific challenge. So here we would like to show you what it is like. So here we have an example of a trainer named John. And John is talking with his trainer and trying to consult the problem that he is having. So on the right side, there is that chat. And then at the middle is you can see the code that they are working or coding together. And this is an example of one of the projects from our, one of our boot campers. So they are building real world applications so that at the end of the boot camp, again, um, you will have a portfolio ready that showcases your acquired skills. But one of the important things that we also would like to highlight is that in this boot camp, it's not just about the technologies that you learn at the start of the boot camp you are going to focus on the module that builds you your core foundation and having a strong coding foundation allows you to learn different technologies faster the full stack boot camp has demo days so we have demo days each month and what i will show you is one of the websites built by one of the programmers 
and that he was able to build this website in just one month in the bootcamp. So as you can see, even if you have zero background, the bootcamp is beginner friendly enough for you to understand and be able to build websites, even if you have zero background. In the StackTrek Bootcamp, the platform that you will be using is the most advanced training technology here in the Philippines. And the big difference here, we are more focused on having you do more coding hours. If you do more hands-on, you are able to apply immediately the skills that you just learned. The more you apply the skills, the more you realize the things that you need to improve on. And as you learn and apply these skills, you get better and better at it. There you have two options, the co-living and the digital. Digital is virtual, so you can take this one anywhere. And co-living is that you will be living with other boot campers and learning at the same time. Now, we would like to add more details on what the co-living is like. So the co-living bootcamp, you don't have to worry about anything else but to learn and experience life. You don't have to worry about spending for food anymore. It is already covered. Also, the accommodation is also included. But the good thing about it is that beyond just learning, of course, we need to live our lives. There is a rooftop where in, if you need a breather, you can just be there, get some air. There are lounges that you can chill around. So in the co-living bootcamp, it's really different than just a typical bootcamp. You learn because that's the main thing that you want to do in the bootcamp. But also there are in-person sessions wherein you get inspired from people from the industry. In the co-living bootcamp, there are barbecue nights, movie nights, and weekend parties and socialize. You can also leverage on the amenities and gym program. This is what it looks like to be part of the co-living bootcamp. It's very different. You learn, but at the same time, you have fun. So the co-living bootcamp is situated mainly around BGC and Makati. So you can imagine that if you want to also go out, it's BGC is just five minutes walking distance. And the benefits of being part of the bootcamp is that we have job partners wherein we negotiated with them that if you are a graduate of the bootcamp, you will have at least 25 to 30K starting salary. And this is quite high considering that you have zero experience and you are still starting out. So one of the key benefits here at StackTrack Full Stack Bootcamp is that more than just a learning, we help you accelerate your career. So don't worry about having zero experience. Don't worry about being a non-coder and you want to enter the industry. Because if you finish and be a graduate of the bootcamp, you already have guaranteed job interviews. And if you graduate, at the top 30, so then you have guaranteed job offers already. There's no stopping you in getting the IT industry. As long as you are with the Stack Track Full Stack Bootcamp, then the opportunities for you is beyond just learning. It goes over to you landing your first job and landing a highly paying job as well. So here, why IT? These are just the published rates of IT today. If you have one to four years, you will be earning on average 45K monthly. If with five years, you will be earning around 80K. As you level up, let's say to senior manager, you can even go to 172,000 for your monthly salary once you are able to enter the it industry the first stop is the first step is the hardest but once you are already in over opportunities are left and right so you really have high earning potential once you are able to enter the it industry and with that one if you are interested you can apply now the link is here below. It's bit.ly slash Bootcamp application. 
And if you have questions, then feel free to find us on Facebook. You can message us there. And we hope that the Stack Trek Full Stack Bootcamp is one of the opportunities that you will leverage on as you enter the IT industry and land your first tech job. And with that one, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good day. There. So thank you so much for that informative session, Ms. Haifa. And at this moment, so for those for those interested to start their career in tech, so these this bootcamp might be something for you. And with that one, for if you have more questions about the bootcamp, feel free to message us at fb.com slash stacktrek or simply follow us at our official Facebook page. And if you want to upscale and improve your skills in programming, join Stack League, the Philippines' largest online programming league with a year-round cash prize of 10 million pesos. So fill, um, create your account at stackleague.com. Again, for more questions or more information, you could also email us at info at stacktrek.com. And to get the latest updates, so this is not the only event that we will be doing. We still have a lot of upcoming events and initiatives for you. Visit us at fb.com slash stacktrek slash events. Once again, for those who were not able to join us as early kanina, so you may still have the chance to join our Code your future FB community. So you mga nag error kanina, you could um, use this group to clarify or to ask questions about the error that you were experiencing. All right. So you get to connect with fellow Filipinos learning how to code, connect with career shifters, and get the latest news on upcoming workshops and career sessions. So there you have it. Once again, congratulations for successfully completing your first program in 40 minutes and i hope this is not um the last step that you will be taking for you to pursue a career in tech so again we still have a lot of events workshops and sessions for you and we hope to see you there so once again congratulations and thank you for joining our 40 minute coding workshop in partnership with the ict region 8 eastern visayas this has been isa your host mayong adlaw everyone